Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, I will show you a very easy way of achieving faux rust using only three ingredients. It took me a little while to get there and I've had a few fails. So hopefully with this tutorial, you will bypass the fails and get straight to success. But first of all, you might be wondering what is this faux rust business and why do I want to do it? Well, as you can see, I do have a finished project to show you after the tutorial so that you can get a feel of the aesthetic but in general faux rust in paper crafting and junk journal making adds a weathered textured and aged look which a lot of us love and also as an added bonus this method is very cost effective and did i say easy you pretty much have nothing to lose all right let's get started you will need black and brown acrylic paint Next thing you need is cinnamon. So I know there's different, there's like really fine cinnamon and then there's chunkier cinnamon. I'm not sure what this is, but you can see it's kind of, it's kind of like dust really, but it has little bigger specks. I don't know how else to explain it. And the third ingredient that you need is glue. I'm using, P this one says PVA wood glue. It's just white glue. Uh, it's PVA white glue, like school glue. So any glue that you have that's white and dries clear will do the job. If you have Mod Podge, perfect, go with that. So those are the three ingredients for making faux rust, paint, cinnamon, and glue. Then you will need some tools. I find that using a sponge, any type of a sponge that you have actually is probably sufficient. You probably don't need anything else. And maybe just one more brush for dabbing on the glue. So this is pretty much the only two things that I use. And then I have some other things handy just in case. And finally, you need a heat gun or a hair dryer. will also do the job. You can air dry it as well. I didn't try it, so I'm not sure if the effect is the same. But I think if you air dry it, you get a more kind of an even appearance. Whereas using a heat gun or heat tool adds these uh, bubbles and raised surface and, and more of an uneven kind of scratchy surface. Okay, so that's all you need. Now, let me show you how to do it. First off, I wanted to show you an actual raster thing. And this was my reference point, kind of, when I was making this project. I just want to point out, when things rust, they tend to accumulate, well, the rust tends to accumulate in some areas more so than in others. And there's also, obviously, variations of the color of rust. I didn't play around with the whole silver paint thing. Uh, you can. But if I put my faux rust thing next to this actual rust thing, it's pretty close. And that's, that's kind of what I was going for. If we have a look at this piece here, see that? Very close and very easy to achieve. I might have forgotten to mention that you will need your bases, obviously, <laughs> the things you're going to rust. So I have die cut. These are just uh, cardstock pieces that I've die cut using, you know, the dies that I have. If you don't have a die cut machine or these dies, you can just cut your own shapes by hand. But I find that using a cardstock, it doesn't have to be too thick, but you don't want flimsy paper either. All right, we have everything ready. Now I'm going to get some brown paint and some black paint. Just using this plasticky sheet, sheet, I mean, you use whatever you have. I have my sponge, my brush, and I'm going to put gloves on. Okay, and I have some pages to protect my desk. I'm starting off with the brush. I mean, a sponge, you can use something like this. I tried using this, it didn't work. You want to get a little bit of paint on the corner of the sponge, and then kind of get it off, because you don't want to cover the whole thing in black. You just want to have hints of it. Now get a different corner and do the same thing with brown. There's quite a bit of brown there, so I might add a bit more black. At this point, if you want to like really go for it, and if you have colors like this, copper, and whatever you think is going to go with the rust look, 
you can start adding these colors you can do red like dark red you can do teal i don't have teal but you can get teal by mixing blue and green you can of course do silver if this is the kind of look you're going for so you know you want a bit of silver paint on there but i'm keeping it real simple and just using black and brown we will do one more zoomed up and closer in a moment but i just wanted you to see it this way first okay next thing you want to do get your cinnamon and don't apply the whole or over the whole thing have chunks of cinnamon in what's the word specific places i don't know i'm losing my words there we go a bit closer you can see that i have chunks of cinnamon all right next thing you want to do is get chill paint uh, glue i mean and now you really want to like saturate this thing so don't brush it on but dab it on just like this that cinnamon is going to move around now you can if you want before you do the glue you can dab the cinnamon in with your finger there's no specific signs to this. You just go for it. Okay, here we go. That's probably a bit too much glue. I'm experimenting. Each piece is an experiment. So I'm gonna get rid of this sheet that has that bit of cinnamon there because I don't want cinnamon dust flying around when I go in with my heat tool, which is now. What's gonna happen now is it's gonna start drying with the heat gun and then it's gonna start bubbling and bubbling is perfectly fine use caution clearly when you're doing this you don't want to burn your house down so all right i brought you in real close so hopefully this is gonna make it nice and clear okay so i have definitely added way too much glue and if that happens i kind of dab it down like this and now i'm gonna hide the white part of the glue All right, so there's the piece that I just did, and you've just seen what happens when you add too much glue. We're gonna do the next one, and I'm gonna add a little bit less glue. I wanted to show you these ones here. In case you want to start experimenting with teal, you can see a bit of teal coming through. This one here, I have a bit of copper coming through. You see that? This one here, also a little bit of teal, just on the, oops, on the edges there. You can see just a tiny little hint of color here i've got a bit of copper so you can start playing around with colors okay now i'm going to do one a little bit closer so that you can approximately see the amount of everything that i'm putting down and also i'm not going to add so much glow this time okay i think i might do this piece actually i'm going to do a few pieces all at once because that's usually how i do it we're doing a bit of a production here okay starting off with the black Next, I'm going to use my other corner and go in with brown. Maybe I'll go in with a little bit of copper. I'm not going to do all of them, just so we can leave some with just black and brown. But this is where the playing around comes into the equation. You start adding a bit of this and a bit of that. Remember that accumulation of rust only in some spots so you can do the same thing with paint okay at this stage and what i didn't do in the previous one is you can if you want just go in and add a little bit of dust of cinnamon well it, this is exactly what i did in the previous one then you can go in with the glue don't go crazy like i did in the previous one so the whole thing wants to be needs to be covered in glue there we go and then maybe if you want you can add accumulations of cinnamon in some spots maybe dab it in see that i've dabbed that in and then perhaps i mean you don't really have to but maybe you want to like dab that in with a bit more glue because what i find cinnamon that's not covered with the glue will stay dry looking if i do this you can see all that shine in real life actually to be honest with you there's no shine but here on video for some reason it's going anyway what i'm trying to show you is that cinnamon that hasn't been covered with glue that's not going to go anywhere it's glued down but it doesn't have glue on top so that's another thing that you can do you can cover some of the cinnamon and then not cover the rest of the cinnamon and at this point you want to go and dry with the heat gun while this is still wet so i wouldn't go and apply glue on all of the pieces because then 
This is going to dry and we want it wet so that it starts to bubble. So you will notice as you're drying, your piece will curl up and then it will it would flatten out. And once it flattens out, it's dry. That's done. And you can see how there was a little bit of bubbling. You can go and you know press that down if you if you want. I, I don't do that. I just leave it as it is. Whatever you do, it's going to look just fine. I might now do two at a time because they're quite small pieces. Okay, once the glue is on, I'm going to go in, add my cinnamon, second serving of cinnamon, if you will. I might press it in, press it down, and now I'm going to dry it. Look at this, like that bubbling just adds to the whole uh, char character of this rusted thing. We are real close now. There's a tiny little bit of cinnamon there, just the dusting. I mean, that on its own already, you can leave it like this, let it air dry, perfect. And now the drying process. All right, so that's real up close. There wasn't much bubbling on this one. So the more glue that you add on or the thicker or the wetter your piece, the more bubbling there's going to be. See how wet that is? Let's see the bubbling. All right, so here's what I think. This is the key that I've just done. And this is that large pieces that I've done previously. Actually, it was this one, the one where I added a whole lot of glue. And you can see that it's kind of a little bit of a fail. I think that amount of glue you can get away with on small pieces like this. On larger pieces, that, that's an issue. And what I also love about this whole process is that the chunk of the cinnamon and the glue creates these kind of chunky bits. So it really looks like actual rust because you can see that rust there. It's, it's chunky. It's raised. Look at that. It's bubbled. It even looks bubbled. How disgusting is this thing? All right. So I hope that has demonstrated properly um, the whole process of making these things and you will probably find that things you know there some of them are better than others this one here i used silver paint and i tried to recreate this abomination mm, that was a bit of a fail all of the smaller pieces actually look much much better than the larger pieces why is that looking at the big pieces even though i did the exact same thing the full rust just doesn't translate as well as it does on the smaller pieces. There we go. All right, this one here, what I did wrong with it, this is the first one that I tried, and I actually used matte medium. Um, this is the thing that I used, gel medium matte, which is supposed to be mixed with acrylic paints to make them matte rather than glossy. So what was I thinking using this? I'm not really sure. I thought that it's gonna work, but it didn't. This is what happened, it dried white. So you really want PVA glue that dries clear and if your project end up, ends up looking like this, then try a different product. And this is the one where I finally thought, oh, this is going to work. But I also decided to not work on such large pieces. So it was trial and error. I was basically just trying things out. What I wanna do now, while I've got everything out, I want to try and salvage this one and see if I can now, with my newfound knowledge of how to do this, I wonder if I can actually salvage it, basically, make it better. So maybe I'll just add a little bit of paint because if I ruin it, it really, it really doesn't matter. I haven't done this before. Perhaps this is a technique that you can use. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go in with my glue. Am I probably going overboard now with a bit too much cinnamon? Maybe I'll just do this again a little bit. And while it's still wet, I need to get a move on and start drying. Did I make it better or did I make it worse? 
I think I made it better. So now that you know how to do it, I also wanted to share, like I said in the introduction, this journal that I made, just to give you an idea and the feel of the aesthetic of the kind of project that you would want to put these rusted things on. So I've used three pieces and for some reason my light isn't very good because I took my black gloves off. Let's see if anything changes with the gloves. Yeah, you can see that coming through a little bit better now, I think. I could be imagining it, but I used three pieces and that's all I did and only on the cover, none on the inside. But I'm going to show you the inside anyway as a little flip through. So basically we're going for the grunge. It's very grungy, very aged, very distressed look journal you will see inside. There's also some rusty pieces here that I've used. I didn't rust this. There was a whole craze happening a few years ago where people were rusting everything. I didn't, uh, I, I never actually did it, but this was sent to me by one of my subscribers. So this was a perfect project to put it in. And you, there's just a few pieces layered here. There's some foam, brown foam. I was gonna show you what it is, but I used it all up. It's this stuff, only not green, I used brown. Just cut it down and then I just a piece of fabric. And then I have a little paper ephemera piece here, a little bit of this mesh trim kind of thing, a little bit of this leftover piece that I actually used here on the spine, on the inside to cover the spine. I made this cover from scratch just using cardboard. And that's basically all it is, just layering some different pieces and then using my rusted pieces. And here I added a little chain. This is glued to the cover. And then I have this little heart charm kind of dangling on top of that key. I feel like this, this key should have a hole there in the middle, but it doesn't. So anyway, now we're going to do a flip through without the gloves. And basically in this type of an aesthetic, which is kind of grungy and aged and weathered, you're going for obviously those colors of browns and blacks and anyway let's let's just do the flip through so i use some book corners here and i am going to list this journal in my etsy if anyone wants to purchase it so these are just little bits and pieces that i had in my stash that i went in and started adding to this journal i made this journal yesterday so usually making journals takes me a little while but this is from my video of using tea bags to I don't know, create little embellishments or see-through embellishments. I'm going to link that video. So as I was saying, usually making journals takes me a while. Like I don't make a journal a day, but I made this whole journal from scratch yesterday. There was a whole lot of sewing and you will notice things like this. For example, this page had a rip and I just went in and sewed that rip and really like that effect so as we'll go along you'll notice things like this i just went and sewed a little cross little thing there and it just goes so well with this kind of a grungy aesthetic so there's some pockets and there's lots of sewing lots of black thread so we're going for the very aged very grunge this isn't everyone's cup of tea this kind of thing i'm really loving it lately but I don't like to overdo the dirty look. Does that make sense? I've used off cuts of paper. You can see how all of my pages have been ripped down. And then I had all these off cuts and I used all of those off cuts as we go along in this journal. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. This is coffee spills. And if I included, if all of my pages had this, the whole thing would look dirty. In, that's how I feel anyway. Just random stitching you can see this here is paint but it actually looks rusted and it's just a coloring page from a coloring book this here is a pocket i have a, actually a tutorial on these layered pockets using book pages and a little mason jar stuck in there and that sewing thing that i was talking about middle of the first signature rusted little bit of lace here on the side so you see what i mean you want to balance the whole grunge look with not so grunge things okay this here beautiful paper onion skin i've been hoarding this for ages look at that and i feel like it will be really nice to grunge this up as well but not everything has to be 
inked and grunged and completely, I keep saying dirty, dirty looking uh, because I don't have a better word for it. All right, there's a little bag. Just using things from my stash. This was also in a tutorial that I did on baggies, I called it, a long time ago, creating those little bags. And then again, as I said, just pulling things out of my stash. This is a tutorial I did on those Hawaiian Lee flowers, you know, those things. And I spray painted the flowers and they've gone from like really bright pinks and yellows and greens to this beautiful <laughs> metallic kind of look. And again, off cut piece from the cover. So you can see I've kind of used, not kind of, I have used um, my, you know, inking thing to go over the cover just to make it less white because that material I used is completely cream-ish white and it just didn't go with the aesthetic. So maybe I can even grind it up a bit more in here as well. The thing that I love about this aesthetic is that you can't make mistakes. So you go in and you grind up a little something here and it's it just goes with the whole thing. Okay, just a little pocket over here and over here. And then, you know, you can fold your pockets down. You can just do all sorts of stuff. Some journaling spots in there. So I hope you can notice the kind of the thread that goes through of the black stitching. These earthly colors. This is, you know, this page I purposefully ripped. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this, but I ripped the page. You see that? And then I stitched it and then I stitched another stitch here and I added a little piece of an off cut here just because I wanted to try it out. Like I wanted to see where it's going to take me. I'm not sure that I'm going to, that this is something that I'm going to keep doing, but it really goes with that aesthetic. This is an envelope. I also did this one in a tutorial and then most of these things that I've been clipping in and putting in are things that I've done in tutorials and I have in my stash. And then when I need to make a journal quickly, like yesterday when I thought I need to make this journal so I can show you guys, then I can just go into my stash and pull things out. As you can see, this paper here, leftover piece from doing the back cover over here and, and the front cover. So just ripping up pieces of paper, using leftovers and creating little tabs and other fun stuff. And then this here, I don't know, just pages put in together. This is the leftover from this material that I used to cover the spine. Maybe I'll finish the flip through and then I'll tell you how I made, how I constructed the book. And then here again, that's that foam leftover piece of foam, if that's even what it's called, stitched down and then stitched when the page is open. You can see that now. So you just stitch down and then, you know, up a bit and just created that kind of thing. And it just looks cool in a journal folding the pockets and popping stuff in. This is tea bag covered again in that video. And then a page from a book. And then this is also in the video, you know, a journaling spot. You see it goes with the aesthetic. Maybe this image doesn't really go, but I like how it looks in there. Here's a little flip up and you can see this page and this page, and this is what I'm talking about. You know, there's a lot of grunge and it's not everyone's cup of tea and it doesn't have to be, but I think it's important not to really overdo it, you know, to oblivion. Here's a little piece, just a little, just a little something there, like journaling spots. And I was using up, up leftover paint, which is pretty much what, what I have here. So I can go and use some, grab some cardstock and then just make marks. And here's a little thing that looks great in the journal. Pop that in there, it's a little pocket the other side of that rusted piece that was sent to me and the middle of the second signature a bit of that piece again that's all i had it's all used now a little ruffle here from that scrapbook paper leftovers and then just little pockets so we're going with the theme of the grunge and i think stapling stapling is something that i don't generally use in junk journals like the staple pockets but for this kind of aesthetic it looks so good Anything you pop down is going to look good. I just love it to an extent. Like I wouldn't want to go completely grunge with all my journals, but 
when I do make them, I find that they're quite fun to make. This is the life, my friends, right here. My beautiful boy. I love your little nose. Yes, I do. I love you. And we're nearly at the end. And we are at the end, actually. And here we go. I have this handmade by Natasha from Treasure Books at the back. And that's done. And I'm going to pop this into my Etsy shop. It's available now. Well, if it's not in there, then it's gone. So, just very quickly, I made this book, this cover using cardstock. I cut down three pieces of cardstock. Front cover, back cover, and spine. And I glued that on top of this fabric leaving a little margin in between so that you can see you know we want a flexible fold in there so there's a little bit of a margin in between the cardstock and then i folded the fabric over the top of the the edges and then i covered the spine using this material and then i covered the front and the back panels with scrapbook paper so that's hiding all of those fabric edges that have been folded over. I used book corners. And if you notice, this piece is held down by two brads. Like this whole chunky thing is held down by these two brads and obviously glue. But I put that through the cover and then I covered with scrapbook paper so that you can't see the feet of the brads. Okay, anyway, I think this kind of thing deserves a proper tutorial. So hopefully this kind of helps you see the aesthetic of the, the rusty things that you can put on top and mixing it in with something that's more clean so that it's not all weathered and, and dusty and dirty looking. And also my light changes depending on what's on there. So you can see when I'm wearing my black gloves, this is actually how it looks in real life. So when you're looking at it like this, it's quite dark. It all blends in together. But in real life, you can see difference. Like you can see that this is two pieces and not one chunk of dark blob in the middle of the journal. And there we have it. That is how you achieve faux rust. And I think we're pretty close to the real thing, especially this side here. You can see that coloring. The cinnamon gives it more of a this kind of feel here so i hope you feel inspired to try this technique out very simple very easy very quick and i hope you feel inspired by the journal as well i love the grunge aesthetic and to be honest with you it's it really does make things a little bit easier when you're going for this kind of look that's what i found in any case all right well let me know what you think in the comments down below thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video Bye.